next step is we want to think about um, what's going to happen both when the app loads and what happens anytime we select an element. And essentially what we want to do is we want to uh, grab the element, the current element from the element list, set the image uh, to the, uh, the image file for that element, and set the label to, to just a question mark. Um, and so that's what you'll do when you go to the next element, and then once we hook into that the show answer, um, that will uh, then will do something else with the label. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to create a function that's going to handle all this and then we'll we'll call that that function. So this function will be called update element. Now this is uh, in the book uh, you can see the the text for uh, this function. Uh, we're going to set the answer label, uh, the text of the answer label to a question mark. We're then going to uh, create a constant called element name, uh, which is going to grab uh, an element from the element list uh, that depends upon our current element index. And then we're going to set the image in our uh, UI user interface image uh, to that element. Uh, and then uh, we will actually um, have it display that image. So we're going to start with the answer label. Uh, that is the outlet for, for our label. Uh, and we're going to set its text to a question mark as a string. We're then going to create a constant called element name. And what that is, is it will be an item from the element list and the item from the element list we want is whatever the current element index is. The next thing is we're going to create an image. We're going to say let image equal UI image. And it's, we're going to use this, yeah, named. And what it's going to be named is element name. So the idea is we're we're creating an image, um, and we're we're finding it by looking for its name. And so as long as you have the items in your array spelled exactly the same as the image files, um, this should grab the appropriate image. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our image view, which is the uh, the outlet we created for our for our image view, and we're going to set its image equal to that image that we just created. Now this function will uh, do all these things. It's going to set the text to a question mark and basically set the the image to the proper image of the element. And the first thing we need to do is we want this to happen when the app loads. So I'm going to go inside this function view did load, and after the super dot view did load, I'm going to add a call to the update element function. And then the next thing we're going to do is anytime we go to the next element, we hit the button to select the next element, we also want to update the element. But we want to do something else with that, which is that we also want to uh, add one to the uh, current element index. We want to literally go to the next element. By increasing the index by one, uh, that's going to uh, move us to the next item in the array and give us the next element. And then once we do that, we update the element and we get um, the image and everything we need for that element. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to show the answer. So when we click the show answer button we want the text of the label to change from a question mark to whatever the current element is. And the way we do that is we get the text 
from uh, the array, the element list array. Uh, so I'm going to set my uh, answer label dot text. I'm going to set it equal to whatever the current element is. So element list dot or and I'm going to get the current element index. So this will almost make our app run correctly. And I'm going to show you the one problem we have here, because what we have is we're updating the screen to display the image. Uh, we, the show answer button should work. The go to the next element button should work most of the time. So let's test it and see what happens. So uh, I'm running the app, and a couple things that are good right now. We've got an image on the screen. That's good. Uh, our label uh, is a question mark, and our two buttons are there. And also, even though I'm looking at this on an iPhone 11 Pro Max, and our storyboard was uh, you know, previewed on an iPhone 4S, it's still centered in the screen because the constraints we put on there um, and it still, you know, looks decent. Now, what's going to happen here is, uh, as I run this, uh, it, it, it looks like it's going to work. Okay, press show answer, it shows me the answer. I go to the next element, we get the next element picture, uh, we get a question mark, uh, show the answer. Everything is working. Okay. Now, remember, there's only four elements. Okay, but the next element button is still there. And so when I click on that, look what happens. It crashed. All right. Here's the issue. Uh, the way it's set up right now is every time we update the element, we, we click over the next element, it adds one to the current element index. Well, that's all fine and good until we get to sodium. right? Uh, remember, our index starts at zero, that's carbon, and then gold is one, chlorine is two, sodium is three. Well, when I'm on sodium and click go to next element, it adds one, goes to item four, and tries to update the element, and tries to access the element list at location four. But there's no item at location four, and so that crashed the app. So that's something we have to be really careful of anytime we're using arrays, is that uh, we uh, we don't ever try to access something outside the range of the array, and we can see down here in the console that was our fatal error. Our index was out of range. We tried to to access uh, an item in the array uh, that did not exist. So there's one minor change we need to make to the uh, go to next element, which is that most of the time when we do this, we want to add one, except that we if uh, we're at the end of the list. What we want to do is cycle back to the beginning again. So what the text suggests we do is it suggests that we, when, when we call this, we add one to the element index, and then we check, is it out of range? So I'm going to ask this question. If current element index is greater than or equal to uh, element list dot count. And what that's going to do is it's going to check, hey, are we, are we still inside the array or have we gone beyond it? And remember, the count of the array uh, in this case is four, okay? Um, but remember, there's not, there's not an item at an index of four. It goes from zero to three. So if this is the case, if we're outside of the bounds, we're going to go ahead and set current element index back to zero. Uh, we could have here, we could have just used the number four, but usually it's a good idea to, um, uh, to get the count of the, the array, because if later uh, you decided, hey, I want to make this more robust, and you add more uh, element uh, images and add more uh, elements uh, to this, um, then that's going to change what the count is. And so you don't want to have to add things here and then change something down here. This would automatically update if you add in more elements or take out elements. So this uh, should now give us a fully working app. So now here's our app. Still looks the same. Uh, everything still works. Show answer, next element. Uh, everything is going fine. 
now we're at the end, okay? Uh, we see it's sodium, that's working, so let's see what happens when we click next element. Well, we click next element, it added one to the index, saw that we were outside of the bounds, so set it back to zero, and now we're back at the start again. So we, that's, uh, that's the app um, for element index for uh, chapter 18 in the Intro to App Development uh, iBook. And uh, um, yeah, a little bit working with um, constraints, working with uh, putting things in a stack view uh, to make that user interface uh, uh, look this, the same uh, on uh, whatever device we're using and a little bit more practice with, with arrays and with actions and outlets.